John with Roundabout Woodworks. And uh, it's been a while since my last video. I thought I ought to make another one before I forget how. Uh, first, I've had a lot of new subscribers over the last few months. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for subscribing. Um, today's video, well, if you watched my Billy Club video, I came out on a early, I came out early in the morning to Buffett. I had my coffee sitting on the bandsaw, which is over there, about six feet to the right, to the left. And uh, when I got through buffing, my coffee had a bunch of little stuff floating in it, which brings me to today's project. So uh, what I did that afternoon, I came back out here and I turned the cover for my coffee cup. And uh, I measured all the cups in the house and they all fell within a range which I don't remember now because it's been a while. Uh, but it's a universal fit coffee cup lid. And uh, my daughter gave me a, as a gift a, a coffee cup that the lid doesn't fit. So that's what today's project is going to be. Uh, lid for your coffee. I want to apologize for the choppy editing of this video. Occasionally when you're out gathering wood, which I hope all of you are now, it's a great way to I have plenty of turning stock. Uh, it's a lot more fun to turn green wood than it is to turn dry wood. There's less dust and softer. It's easier to cut, easier on the tools and the hands and the nerves and all that. But sometimes you see a pile of wood and usually it's covered with limbs, tree limbs and leaves and you can't really tell what it is but you stop and it's all wood this size. This is about four inches in diameter. Uh, this is a piece of oak. Don't leave this sitting because this is good for turning too. Uh, you can make very small bowls. Like this one. Then it's oblong, which is kind of a neat effect. Anyway, so you've got your you got your wood, your log. I wouldn't call this a log because I can hold it in one hand. What do you do with it? First thing you do is you split it right down the middle. Um, what this does is slows down, but does not eliminate cracking. But what will happen is you will likely get small cracks in the end, right there. Whereas with a regular piece of wood, or when it's in a round, you see what, I don't know if you can see what happens, but you got just a spider web crack in there, all from all directions, across the grain, with the grain. So the first thing you need to do is split it. Uh, that, like I said, that reduces the cracking, but doesn't eliminate it. Some woods, it eliminates it. Uh, ash, when I have a small piece like this, I split it, and it, it won't really crack. Sometimes it will, depending on how the tree grew and the stress on the limb and, you know, you got reaction wood and I forget what the opposite of reaction wood is, but uh, ash doesn't crack very much. Uh, one of my favorite woods to turn because there's so much yield from it. it I don't lose very much to, to cracking. Uh, what do you split it with? Well, uh, you can split it with your bandsaw. But that takes a long time. It's dusty, uh, hard to make, hard to maintain a clean cut. Uh, I use a fro and a mallet. Well, this is actually a club, I suppose. Uh, anyway, that's what I use, which gives a uniform split. The great, uh, oak splits really well if you heat your house with wood. You probably already know that. Um, ash still splits pretty well, but not as easily as oak. Uh, elm, um, you're not going to split elm. It doesn't, it doesn't split. You can force it, but it's more work than it's worth. Uh, so if it's elm, I'll just cut it on the bandsaw. Um, 
or a chainsaw if it's big enough if you're out with a chainsaw but something like this you you don't want to split with a chainsaw that's dangerous and the kerf of the saw is going to take up a, enough of the wood that you're just going to wind up with not very usable pieces unless you're turning something small uh, like a crochet hook uh, uh, enjoy the video doing splitting will go down in, in oak it goes a lot farther than you might imagine so what I did was I just cut off slices of the wood until I could not see crack this one's got two look on the other side where the fresh cut is there's a crack and then that was the last piece you see this one has got a crack on both sides goes all the way through stronger man than me could split it this one the crack is barely visible In any case, this is what I wound up with. No crack on that side, no crack on that side. The pith is right, right there in the middle. So this is our project piece. All right, now what I'm gonna do is mark the center. Don't have to do this but it sometimes helps. I mark the center on the edge of the wood. Now what I'm gonna do is mount it between centers. And the safest thing you can have on your lathe is a remote switch, which I have. Mm 
Alright, now let me adjust the uh, camera and we'll start turning the lid. I'm going to be using uh, bowl gouge with an Irish grind. I suppose this is almost an Ellsworth grind, but I'm just going for uh, this profile. I, I don't know what the angles are. Uh, I just this is how I do it. I have a jig that I sharpen all my gouges with. Uh, I just I've been sharpening this gouge the same way for a very long time. Anyway, here goes. <laughs> trying to get down to solid wood. And by solid wood I mean an uninterrupted cut. We're down still in the cambium layer here, but I have flat spots. So I'm trying to get down to a completely round blank. Now for this, uh, I'm going to use a chuck. You don't have to have a chuck. You can do this with a faceplate and glue blocks. A little CA glue, you can do it that way. If you don't have a chuck, that's how I would suggest. Uh, and maybe one of these days I'll demonstrate that. Uh, glue blocks and chuck, uh, glue blocks and face plates, but I'll talk about that later. Alright, now got a tenon, can hold it. still have some material to remove. What I need to do is mark the diameters here. There's going to be a lip that fits inside the cup and then this part sits on the rim of the cup. So I'm going to do that.
that I had put the button, thought I had pressed the button, I thought the camera was recording. Um, but apparently the camera was not recording, so you did not see me measure the ID and the OD for a lip that's on the inside because I want the lid to sit down on the cup and I don't want it to slide off. Uh, you did not see me mount a different chuck on the lathe, turn the blank around and fit into a, a recess that I turned on the other side. Um, you did not see me switch to a spindle gouge. And for all of that, I apologize. But basically what I did was all that I had explained. I, I put a recess, it's, not turn, it's uh, now being held on my chuck in expansion mode. I'm turning the outside, the top rather, turning the top. Uh, it's going to have a knob and it's just going to be your normal lid like you probably are already thinking I don't need to watch the rest of this video I can do that myself so anyway this is it I'm gonna finish this up <coughs> This is just boil linseed oil. That's the video. This is the lid. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for subscribing. I appreciate it. Um, thanks for all, thank you for all of your comments and the emails that y'all have been sending. Uh, I really appreciate those. I'm happy to respond. Uh, some of the comments I'm unable to respond to because uh, I don't know why it doesn't give me the option of responding. So if you left a comment and you felt slighted because I didn't respond, uh, I apologize now because I couldn't uh, respond to your comment. Um, yeah.
Anyway, thanks for watching the video. See you next time.